Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. America, our Canadian friends north of the border, and all our ships at sea. I'm your roving reporter, Smedley Butterworth, and this is 1937, Part 2, In Review. July, South Pacific. During her attempt to be the first woman to fly around the world, Amelia Earhart's plane disappeared after taking off from New Guinea. An ongoing search has yet to find any evidence of a crash. However, authorities are quietly stating they presume Miss Earhart and her navigator to be deceased. August. South Atlantic. Fishermen and merchant sailors along the west coast of Africa have told of sighting German U-boats in the South Atlantic. Bohemia. Chancellor Hitler continued his annexation of neighboring lands by sending his army east to occupy Prague and all of Bohemia. Reich's minister Goebbels once again claimed, quote, the Fuhrer has an absolute right to unite ethnic Germans under his banner, unquote. European diplomats frown and speak of injustice yet remain seated with teacups in hand while doing so. Moscow. Evidence continues to suggest a great purge is sweeping across the Soviet Union like a giant tidal wave. Mass arrests have apparently spread into the civilian sector with landowning peasant farmers known as kulaks non-Russians, Stalin's political opponents, and their families being hauled out of their homes night after night, never to be seen again. September. Long Island, New York. The Grumman F4F Wildcat made its maiden flight. Norfolk, Virginia, USS Yorktown, CV-5 in Navy speak, was commissioned after three years of construction and outfitting. First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt smashed the traditional bottle of champagne against her hull, thus christening the American Navy's newest and most modern aircraft carrier. October, Germany. Great War veteran, recipient of the Blue Max, and author of a tactical manual titled Infantry Attacks, Erwin Rommel has become one of Chancellor Hitler's new favorites. With promotion to colonel and appointment to supervise compulsory military training for the Hitler Youth, Rommel is seen by many in Berlin as a general in waiting. Rising star of the U-boat arm, Captain Lieutenant Otto Kretschmer took command of U-23, a Type II coastal submarine. However, many senior officers of the Kriegsmarine disagreed with this assignment, stating Kretschmer is too young and inexperienced for such a command. Kretschmer is, in fact, just 25 years old and has less than two years' experience in submarines. China. The Japanese Imperial Army continued its conquest of China with another string of decisive victories. The rising sun now flies over Beiping, Hopei, Shenzhen, and Kwantung. With the exception of British-controlled Hong Kong, Emperor Hirohito has laid claim to all of coastal China and the riches found therein. November, Indochina. In response to growing concern over the situation in China, British and French military aid has been flowing into the port of Saigon, then moving north by rail to Yunnan province. China. 
Encouraged by international support, Generalissimo Chiang Kai-shek reoccupied Suyan after the Japanese garrison marched away for other offensive operations. He then counterattacked Hunan and won a close victory, despite the reluctance of some of his men to stand and fight. Rome. The Italian general staff embraced the tactical concept of vertical envelopment by fielding its first airborne unit. December, Germany, Munich. General Erich Ludendorff, brilliant soldier, incompetent politician, and inconsolable conspiracy theorist, mm -hmm. died at age 72. Rome. Mussolini has ordered the Italian diplomatic mission to the League of Nations to return home and never go back to Geneva. Manila. After drafting and implementing a plan to turn the Philippine Army into a professional fighting force, General Douglas MacArthur retired from the U.S. Army after 34 years of service. Hailed as a hero of the Great War and simultaneously reviled as a traitor for his rough handling of the Bonus Army protesters, MacArthur was effectively exiled to Manila two years ago after a sharp disagreement with President Roosevelt over War Department budget cuts. Now a civilian, the Philippine president has asked MacArthur to stay on as his chief advisor. Los Angeles, the world's first feature-length animated film, Walt Disney's Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, premiered and there you have it, 1937, part two, in review. Thank you, and good night.